Welcome back to Storytime. On today's Storytime, we're going to talk about the third king of Rome named Tullus Hostilius. So here are some people and places. Go ahead and just pause and jot these down. All right, so after our awesome hippie king, Numa Pompilius, hey man, woo after he died, um, if you'll recall, he had no heirs. And the Senate did not make the same mistake that they did after Romulus died. Remember where they got together and appointed a, a king for a day? No, this time... They were really, really quick. They got together. They said, okay, Numa's dead. Long live Numa. Now, um, let us pick a new king. And boom, they picked this guy, Tullus Hostilius. Well, his name pretty much says it all. He was very, very hostile. And he was pretty much diametrically opposed to everything that Numa Pompilius stood for. His whole shtick was, you know, come on, Romans. What makes us Romans? It's fighting, just like we did under Romulus. Not all this hippy-dippy crap that we did under Numa Pompilius. Come on, we're fighters. we got to get together and go fight. And, of course, a lot of the soldiers were like, what? 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 Okay, I guess. So Tullus Hostilius wants to go to war, um, but he has to train this army first because there really hasn't been an army in a very long time under Numa Pompilius. So he spends a couple of years training an army. And then, who does he decide to fight against but Rome's mother town of Alba Longa? So look at this map. We're in uh, central Italy. Here's uh, Lavinia, the city where Aeneas, uh, the city that Aeneas founded, rather. And then Alba Longa, his son Ascanius, founded that town. And then 300 years later, of course, Romulus and Remus were born there. We've already talked about that. And then they founded Rome, so not that, not that far away, there on the Tiber River. So... They decide, Tullus Hostilius is like, we're going to fight against our own mother town, Alba Longa. And um, now how do the hostilities start up? It's usually cattle raids. You know, there's some farms in between these two. And uh, uh, there's some farms that kind of more closely align with Rome and some farms that more closely align with Alba Longa. And then, you know, somebody steals some pigs and then somebody steals some sheep. And before you know it, boom, you're going to war. Anyway, the war goes on for quite a while. And nobody, no, not one town really gets the upper hand. And they keep fighting in this area, right smack dab in between the two towns of Rome and Alba Longa. Now, the king of Alba Longa at this point is a man by the name of Metius. And Metius has a proposal for Tullus Hostilius. So, uh, before the day's battle is about to begin, he calls for Tullus Hostilius to come to the middle of the battlefield so the two kings can just talk one-on-one. -on -one. And Medea says, look, you know, we've been fighting now in this war, in this no man's land here for about a year. And I just feel like we're just going to keep doing this uh, until neither side has any men left. And what's the point in that? So here's what I propose to you, Tullus Hostilius. Let's end the war today. And Hostilius says, well, what do you mean? And Medea says, well, I have noticed that on your side, on the Roman side, you have... Uh, some triplets, the Horatius brothers, a.k.a. the Horatii. And you might have noticed that I have on my side uh, some triplets as well, the Curiatius brothers, the Curiatii. So I propose that we have the Horatii and the Curiatii duke it out, three versus three, while we just surround them, make a big circle around them with our armies. And whichever set of triplets wins, that's the city that wins. And Tullus Hostilius is like, uh... Yeah, let's do it. So, famous scene here, the um, Horatii, this painting by David, Jacques-Louis David, once again, it's called The Oath of the Horatii, and here they are uh, swearing to their father, who's praying that they will do everything they can to defend Rome's honor, and here are their wives and their young children as well. When you guys go to the Louvre in Paris, once again, this takes up a, a pretty good chunk of space. Uh, and when you when you go look at it, pay really close attention to the tender details over here with the, the hand clasped to the, the little child's face. Anyway, so they're swearing an oath that they'll do everything they can to defend Rome's honor. So the day of the battle is here, and the Horatii and the Curiati are thrown into the middle of a huge circle. And boom, we're off. And within, I kid you not, like 45 seconds, two of the three Horatius brothers, dead. So we have three Curiatii versus one lone Horatius. And what does he do? He does what any reasonable human being would do. He runs away, but it's strategic running. You see, as he's running, he starts stripping off lots of his armor, and he just holds on to his sword. 
And forget about this picture and what it displays uh, in just a moment. But uh, the main thing is, uh, as he's running, the three Koriatii are running after him, but a natural gap opens up between the Koriatii brothers themselves because some are faster than others. And what that allows Haratius to do is periodically turn around, stab, 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 and then he starts running again, and then he turns around, stab, 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 and then he runs again, and finally turns around and stab, 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 kills the third Hara or Kuriatius brother. So the lone Horatius defeats all three Kuriatii, and the last Kuriatius that he kills, he takes like this special cloak that uh, the Kuriatius brother was wearing. He takes it as like a spoil of war, and Tullus Hostilius is so excited, and all the Romans are so excited, and Tullus Hostilius tells Medius, look, you can go back to your town of Alba Longa, but I own you. And the next time that I say that we have to go fight a war against somebody, you got to come. You have to do everything I say. But otherwise, you can go rule your town. But I need you when it comes to fighting. And Medius says, okay, and goes back to Alba Longa. Because really, I mean, the whole point of this, Tullus Hostilius just wanted to kind of prime the Roman soldiers up to fight because they had fought so long. So what do they do? They take this lone Heratius, they put him up on their shoulders, and they march all the way back to Rome. And everybody's so excited. And um, oh, there's, there's uh, people pouring out of the city to meet the Roman army uh, in the, on the way uh, back to the city. And right at the city gates themselves, um, finally they put Heratius down. And he has a sister named, wait for it, Heratia. And she comes up to him and they, they give each other hugs. They have this tender moment where they are sort of simultaneously excited that Rome won, that the Heratius brothers showed such valor. But they're also very, very sad because they lost two of their brothers. And so while they're having this tender moment, Heratia looks at her brother and says, that's a really nice cloak. It kind of looks familiar. Uh, wh uh, wh where... Where did you get that? And then the Heratius brother explains, uh, well, you know, um, we, we fought against these three brothers. There were these, these triplets on the other side, and uh, I took it off of the body of the last one that I killed. And she says, triplets, what were their names? And he says, well, they're the Curiatii triplets. And she says, how dare you? I was engaged to him. I made that cloak. <gasps> wow. All of a sudden, a plot twist. And so Heratia becomes enraged and starts actually physically beating up her brother Heratius. How could you do this? I can't believe you killed my fiance. You blankety blank blank starts punching him in the face in front of all these people. And then what does Heratius do? He gets really mad and he takes out his sword and he freaking stabs her right there in front of all of the onlookers and kills her. And all the Romans are like, ooh, ah. Uh, bad move buddy not cool you kind of did that with like 2,000 eyewitnesses we sort of kind of have to arrest you so all of a sudden we have a big trial of the guy who just saved the day for Rome and at the trial I mean it's not really much of a trial what can he possibly say there were thousands of witnesses and so uh, the jury declares him guilty and there's a couple of versions about what happens next, but the one that is probably the one that is the, the foremost is that Tullus Hostilius, the king, called the jury aside right before they sentenced him. And they said, he said to them, look, I know he's guilty. You know he's guilty. We all saw him do it, but he just saved Rome. And you guys need to come up with an alternative punishment than death. I know that the law calls for death, but come on, he just saved Rome. And I really need you to do that. And look, if you don't figure out an alternative way to punish him, I'm going to murder every single one of you. And so the jury says, okay, give us five minutes. And they go running away. And they come back with the strangest penalty ever. Um, they declare him guilty, of course. But he's not going to get the death penalty. And King Tullus Hostilius is happy about that, of course. And uh, instead, uh, Heratius, his punishment is he has to pass underneath, like literally walk underneath, but bow his head and almost crawl underneath a very, very large beam of wood. And all of us have to watch him do that and laugh at him. And that's exactly what he did. And when he passed underneath, when he crawled underneath that big beam of wood, he supposedly was absolved 
of this horrific crime of murdering his own sister in broad daylight. And the Romans kept that beam of wood for the longest time, for like 700 years. It was in the forum, and it was like a like a little historical marker where people would be like, oh yeah, that's the beam of wood that Heratius passed under. Strange, strange, strange. Okay, so now Tullus Hostilius is like, all right, we pretty much beat the Albans, and uh, now we're going to go fight another group of people. And so this time, we go back to our little map here, he declares war on some towns up here in Etruria, the Etruscans, starts to fight against them, and he goes to Medius in Alba Longa and says, hey, remember how we beat your butt, and I told you you had to do everything I tell you to do? Well, get your men together, and we are coming. Dun, 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 dun. You're going to fight with us, the two of us, Rome and Alba Longa, are going to fight against the Etruscans. And so this happens for about a year or so, and uh, during one of the battles, Medius is looking around, and he's like, why am I doing this exactly? I mean... I really, really, really don't have any beef with these Etruscans. I'm tired of fighting for this guy, Tullus Hostilius. I'm just going to leave. So in the middle of the battle, he retreats, and he orders his own men to retreat as well. Now, Tullus Hostilius is looking around. He's like, wait, what's he doing? Note to self. Address this later. Oh, God. Stab, 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 stab. And he keeps fighting at the day's battle. At the end of the battle for that particular day, and the Romans and the Albans are back in their camp, Tullus Hostilius calls all the soldiers together, and then he calls Medius forward and says, King Medius, you have betrayed me. I saw what you did. You swore that you would do anything that I told you to do from this point forward since I defeated you, or rather my triplets defeated you in battle, and I saw that you abandoned the battlefield and drew and called all your men off the battlefield. So this is what I think should happen to you. And then... He gets some of his soldiers to grab Medius. And I don't know if this is the first time in recorded history, but it's probably one of the first. Boom. Medius, his four limbs are tied to four horses, and the four horses go in opposite directions. This is a particular punishment that was popular in the medieval era, and it's called drawing and quartering, like you quarter a human being, like almost cut them into to quarters, I guess. Um, and so that is how Medius meets his end. But, oh, Tullus Hostilius is not done. After he kind of wins a few battles here and there with the Etruscans and signs some peace treaties, etc., etc., he decides to go back to Alba Longa, and because of King Medius' betrayal of him, and he's carrying this, this just hatred so much in his heart because he's so hostile, he tells all the citizens of Alba Longa, you have 30 minutes to gather your belongings and move to my city of Rome, and then I'm going to destroy this city. And that's exactly what he does. Now, in the ancient world, if you're destroying a city, there is one type of building that you should never touch. And that, of course, is a temple. But not to Lus Hostilius. Oh no, this man burned down every single piece of land and property in the town, in the kingdom of Alba Longa, including all the temples. So, are the gods going to be happy about this? Of course not. In the city of Rome, now its size basically doubles with all the Albans who have come into the town. Um, a plague breaks out, sent by the gods to punish the Romans for Tullus Hostilius' arrogance. And this plague starts wiping out hundreds of people and then thousands of people. And finally the king himself gets really, really sick. And one night... I'm sure you probably have felt this before when you've had the flu. Uh, have you ever had that feeling where uh, you're just sort of in this strange haze and you feel so bad that you're like, this is it. I I've got like 30 minutes left. Like, this is it. I'm going to die. Well, if you've had that feeling, that's what Tullus Hostilius was feeling one night. And he was sort of delirious. And he did something that he has never done before. It's something he doesn't even know how to do. He says, I think I have to pray. And so... He finds an old trunk in the palace that has a whole bunch of prayers that Numa Pompilius had written because, hey man, woo, God's peace, love, love. And Tullus Hostilius unrolls a prayer that's addressed to the big boy, Jupiter himself, and he says the prayer, but he says it wrong because he doesn't know how to pray. And what does Jupiter, the king of the gods, do? He sends a lightning bolt, boom, that goes through an open window that hits Tullus Hostilius, and Tullus Hostilius blows up. 
God into all types of little bits and pieces. No male heirs for him. So we'll see what happens next time. What will the Romans do? Will they pick another hostile one? I think not. Next time on Storytime, the best of all the kings and also the most boring.